As you're well aware, we're living in unprecedented times. Join us now for today's special program. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord, let my words heal a heart that hurts. I want to spend. Welcome to another 3ABN Today program. We're so glad that you have joined us. You know, we're all family here, and uh, we're appreciative of you for your prayers and financial support for the ministry of 3ABN. And you know, we look forward to spending this time with you each and every day, and thank you for allowing 3ABN into your living room, or maybe you're watching on your mobile device. Hopefully you're not watching this and driving in the car, okay, right now. Hopefully you're doing this and watching 3ABN or listening to 3ABN in a, in a safe place, but we're just glad that you're part of our family. And you know, it's just uh, really incredible to me when you think about the miracle of 3ABN being a media ministry for over 36 years. And with this whole COVID pandemic that's been going on, 3ABN has just saw an incredible increase with people watching on like their cell phones, our online stream has just absolutely skyrocketed. Some people have their little tablets that they're watching 3ABN on. You know, we believe that 3ABN is here for such a time as this. But then there are other media ministries that are out there too doing an incredible work. And I wanna tell you right now that today is an exciting program because you may be a young person right now tuning into 3ABN, great, because this program is for you. Or maybe you're a grandparent or a parent. Today's program is focusing in on young people and how you can get involved with media ministry. And uh, today we have uh, Christopher Beeson. You're the, make sure I get this right, you're the president of Network 7 Media right. Center, right? Yes. And you're also the ASI Southern Union president as well. That's right. Yeah. So glad that you're here with us today. Yeah, it's our privilege. And uh, sitting uh, next to me here is uh, Jordan Wagner. And you are the Network 7 Media Center Production Director. That's is that right? right? Yep. And you're going to be taking on a new role here too, which we're going to be talking about in more detail here in just a couple of minutes. That's called C4. That's but right. uh, you're going to be overseeing that project as I well. I am. That's correct. Yeah. So uh, Christopher, tell us a little bit about what today's program is going to be about before we dive into more detail, because this is an exciting program. I tell you what, if I were a young person, I still consider myself young, even though I'm in my mid 40s now. <laughs> but if I were, oh, my early 20s or so, this would have been a program that we're getting ready to share with you today that I would have absolutely signed up for. I would have said, Mom and Dad, please let me do this. So tell us what we're going to be talking about today. Just summary. So Network 7 started with a mission, uh, a, a mandate for two things. One was to support our local churches, our local Seventh-day Adventist churches around the North American Division. And we can share a little bit about how we're doing that. And then also to reach our youth and young adults in the, in the church and have those youth and young adults reach youth and young adults outside of the church. Amen. And so those are the, the, the two emphasis, the mandates that we have attempted to follow over the last, believe it or not, going on 16 years now. Wow. Question, both of you, one of you. Uh, why young people? Because we're focusing on young people, young adults, I should say. Why are you selecting that group to really focus in on? Any particular reason? I would say if you start with somebody that's young, you get many years that you can work with mm, them and yeah. you can train them to, to share the gospel. Obviously, there's a lot of need to minister to older people as well. Oh yeah. Um, but as we've seen uh, through statistics, young people are leaving the church. Yeah. And if we can interact with them and we can get them engaged, they're less likely to leave the church. And, and then as they reach out to their friends and they reach out to people younger than them, then we'll be engaging even more people. Amen. So, a, a yeah, little, I agree with that. 
a little statistic that Jordan probably doesn't want me to mention, but he's <laughs> okay. been with us almost since day one. Okay, um, wow. I said almost 16 years. He's been with us almost years. 15 wow. of those 16 years. With Network 7. Yeah, right. and, wow. and he was um, uh, a production assistant in the studio at <laughs> Southern Adventist University. Fantastic. That's where I met him as we were just getting Network 7 going, and I just was impressed with his uh, interest and commitment to mission and ministry. And I said, I, I would like you to be part of our team. And believe it or not, within just a few weeks of meeting him, I asked him if he'd be willing to be our production director. And Amen. I believe that was a, a God-ordained decision because he's been outstanding for our ministry for 15 years. Well, I think about this, Christopher, too. You know, this was a young adult, right? Mm -hmm. Just graduated from Southern Adventist University. Right. You know, you realized his passion for media. Were well, you in media, right? I was, yeah. yeah. And so you realized this and, and, and brought him on board. And now you have the opportunity to reach those that are also right. in the midst of college, university, or graduating. That's and, phenomenal. And when we get to talking about C4, that's been an in the making for literally for years in our hearts Has and it minds. Really? It's not something that we just popped up with a few months ago or something. It's, mm. But the, the opportunity is clearly opened now. Amen. Well, before we uh, dive into more of the detail in today's uh, special program, we want to go to some music now, and this is by uh, Jeff Pearls and he will be presenting Jesus and Me. I traveled alone Upon life's lonesome way My burdens were heavy And dark was my day I looked for a friend Not knowing that he at all of the time been looking for me and now it's jesus and me for each tomorrow for every heartache and every sorrow i know that i can depend upon my newfound friend and so till the end it's Jesus and me Forever I'll sing Of His great love for me Forever I'll tell it On land and on sea I'll stay by His side Contented I'll be For all of my life it's Jesus and me, and now it's Jesus and me, for it's tomorrow, for every heartache and every sorrow, I know that I can depend upon my newfound friend, and so till the end, it's Jesus and me. Jesus and me for each tomorrow, for every heartache and every sorrow. I know that I can depend upon my newfound friend, and so till the end, it's Jesus and me, and so till the end. It's Jesus and me. Hey Amen. Thank you, Jeff Pearls. Boy, that was a happy song, wasn't it? Jesus Amen. and me. What an incredible message. Thank you again for joining us on today's special 3ABN Today program. We're here with Network 7, and we're here with uh, the president of Network 7, Christopher Beeson. And then we have... Um, uh, Jordan Wagner, almost had a brain freeze there, no and you're the uh, production manager, basically, yes. or director That's for Network 7, and then also going to be overseeing the brand new project called C4, mm -hmm. which we'll be talking about here shortly. But as we launch out into this program, tell us about your families, uh, Christopher, okay? Oh, Jordan? Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> so you've got a family? I do, ben? I do. Uh, I've got three little girls at home. Okay. Uh, Emma's eight and uh, Cora is seven. Uh, I'm sorry, six. Okay. And uh, Kenzie's four. So. Wow, you have a busy household. I have a very busy household. <laughs> yeah. so. And uh, are they homeschooled then? Or they are. They're okay. all homeschooled. So. Yeah. so your wife is a busy. She keeps very mom. busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. 
What about you, Christopher? So my wife, Christy, and I have three adult daughters. Okay. Um, who, uh, one got married this year, or oh. excuse me, last year. Yeah. And one to be married this year, depending on when the program airs. Yeah. Um, but uh, they all three are out on their own, and so we're empty nesters, and uh, we're learning what that means, uh, how, to, how, to, how to adjust with that, and we're finding we're, we're just trying to fill it with more ministry. Amen. Well, Lord's been good to you because you don't look like you're old enough to have daughters that are uh, moved out of the house, and uh, you understand that. It's them. the makeup. You it's have a great makeup, makeup artist. Okay. Well, yeah, that's true. We do have a little makeup put on <laughs> to cut down on the shine uh, from the lights. But uh, you understand young people then, because we're talking about Network 7, which is really what I consider multimedia or media, because you do right. social media, you have a, a little studio, and you go out in the field. That's right. Right. So tell us a little bit about Network 7, because someone at home may say, I don't even know what that is. I understand that today's program is for young people, but tell us what Network 7 is all about. So we started uh, Network 7 in 2005. Okay. And um, we started just doing uh, production uh, videos, uh, promotional videos for local churches, uh, shooting seminars and that kind of thing that um, we actually, uh, in long ago, in some early days, shot some seminars that were done in our local Collegedale area and then uh, sent here to 3ABN. I couldn't name what those are, but I recall doing some of those years ago, some family seminars. Um, and since then have done some others. We'll talk about those. But um, then uh, in 2000, late 2006, we heard that Mission Spotlight was oh, going yes. to be retiring. The family, the Heinrich family was going to be retiring. And so a couple of us got together and started thinking, what, what could we do? Could we do this? So what is Mission Spotlight? Because someone at home may say, I don't even know what Mission Spotlight's all about. What does that mean when it was? Sure. Retiring? So those are videos that are promoting the mission emphasis, the uh, 13th Sabbath World Mission Overflow. Of the Seventh-day Adventist, uh, Adventist Church. Of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But um, missions happening all over the world in the different divisions of the Adventist Church. And so they were emphasizing those special offering projects. So in mm -hmm. 2007, we started going out into the field where they were retiring. We started ramping up and going out into the field and then launched Mission Sunlight first quarter 2008. Wow. And so it's still going on. So probably what people know us for the most is either Mission Sunlight or another uh, video we're going to see a little later, the Jack Blanco story, because oh, so many people did are that familiar too. with Dr. Blanco and yes. his writing of the clear word, yep. the paraphrase of the Bible, the, the, the devotional paraphrase. And so we uh, produced a documentary on his story, which is aired here mm -hmm. on 3BN. Yeah, Mission Sunlight, it's incredible, because I, mean, I remember growing up as a kid watching Mission Spotlight. I remember when it was little real things, you go click, click, and it'd have a little cassette tape, and you would watch Mission Spotlight. On Sabbath mornings, yes, my Sabbath dad would morning. take me early yes. because the Fort Walton Beach Church had their carousel that went one direction, and the Panama City Church had the carousel that oh, went the other direction. My. So he would take me early and let me flip all the slides. The slides. Yep. But every now and then... I would forget and we'd have a backward slide. <laughs> and I still have some of those carousels. Do you yeah, really? One day we're hoping to have just a little uh, um, museum about missions. And so, so I actually just bring this up. I actually have the, because 3ABN was mentioned on Mission Spotlight on the old slides years ago and I actually have that carousel at home of 3ABN when it was featured on the Mission Spotlight little carousel. But I remember it was a big deal. Maybe we'll have to update that sometime. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was a big deal as a kid. You know, I enjoyed, of course, missions and mission stories and have the opportunity of pushing that little clicker to follow along with the slides. Right. That was a great thing. But that has retired and you all took on then Mission Spotlight, which is now Mission Sunlight. Right. So, Jordan, that means then you've been out in the field then, shooting yes, some of these. Yes, that's correct. Uh, by God's grace, we've been able to travel to over 85 countries. And, 85 uh, countries? 85 countries. And, wow. And tell what God's doing in ministries around the world. And it's been an incredible experience. And Why? to be able to tell yeah. the church what, what's, what's going on beyond their borders. I was just going to ask you, just answer the question, why is it important to go out into the field and get this? Well, you know, we're talking a lot about youth here. Mm -hmm. And in my view youth don't necessarily have an idea of how big the church is. And so if they can see an idea, if they can get an idea of their, their local church isn't where the church ends, it goes to across the country and then around the world. Amen. It gives them an idea that they're a part of something bigger. And to me, that's really important for them to feel part of something. Hmm. So when you go out into the field, then is just the two of you? Or, I mean, how big of a crew? Because when you see this, you know, Mission Sunlight, which we get in our local church here as well, uh, you take a massive crew with you and it's this incredible travel experience and everything is just easy and like, um, <laughs> okay, I see smiles on your faces. <laughs> sometimes it's the two of us, sometimes uh, we go individually. Um, yeah, but we, we travel with a compact set of equipment 
to be as efficient as we can be. People think that, oh, you go to this country or that country, you must love seeing all those sites. We say, what sites? Because we go there to tell the story of Jesus. Amen. That's right. Mm. So tell us then, okay, so Network 7, then you took on Mission Spotlight, then what happened? What's transpired since? We said 2008 is when it first launched That's right. Mission Sunlight, then what happened? So we've continued to have great opportunities to work with many different ministries. Um, uh, we joined ASI, which we love the networking opportunity with uh, ASI, networking with ministries Amen. like Amen, we love ASI, oh yes. But uh, multiple, multiple other ministries, um, mm -hmm. I don't know if we, we can go into these, but sure, we've just please. got some video clips of Let's some of the it. ministries we've worked with. Child Impact, oh, yes. um, Gospel Outreach, World Youth Group, which incidentally we've been able to actually partner with uh, Feet on the Ground with World Youth Group in Amen. their ministry in Cuba. That's been an incredible blessing. And w when we get to C4 again, we'll talk about some of the opportunities to take some of our uh, C4 students to Cuba with World Youth Group, but we'll get to that. Oh my. Um, and then yeah. as I said, ASI, 3ABN has been a partner with ASI for I don't know how many of these 36 years, maybe most of them, if not all of them. Network 7 had an opportunity to partner with our local ASI Southern Union chapter and be uh, the media partner. And so we've, we've been kind of doing a small production versus what the large production of 3ABN has been uh, in our local Southern Union chapter. Uh, and then I want to mention, uh, again, the Jack Blanco story. We took Jack to Africa, back to the place where he started international ministry in uh, Zimbabwe at Seleucia University. And there's a video clip here of him and some of the professors there from Seleucia, but also of him leading his favorite hymn in the church there for worship. Uh, just a couple of years ago. Is this the role we're getting ready to go to now then? That's right. Okay. We, we, we've just, we're just showing that now. All right. Uh, we'll yep. show a clip fantastic. from, we'll show a clip from the documentary in a, in a few minutes. Okay. Before. Yeah. Fantastic. And that's an incredible story too. You know, we appreciate um, little Blanco and the work that uh, God has called him to do. I mean, it's an incredible story too. And we've been privileged to be able to air even that story here, like you said, several times on 3ABN. And we're hoping uh, to do it properly, to take the documentary to uh, a film, um, product as well down the road, mm -hmm. uh, something similar to what was done with the Desmond Doss story. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And when I think about the work to uh, shoot that, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about that whole, I guess, documentary that you put together, how long did it actually take to put that together? Because I'm assuming that was you, Jordan, that we did were, a lot of the post? Yeah, we, I mean, we were working on it for three years. Three years yeah. okay. um, between taking, going on location, all the, sh uh, the shooting on location and then editing. Mm. So. Yeah, it's an incredible story. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. Yeah. So tell us more, a little bit more then about uh, uh, Network 7. Then, because I know that you're focusing in on, on young people and just tell us yeah, what uh, you have uh, in mind. So we've been talking about C4 and hinting mm -hmm. at it. Yep. Um, that's really what's happening now. All those other things are continuing, mm -hmm. but we're expanding the ministry and we're hiring a team for C4. So let me just kind of give you a, a visual. Um, and maybe they'll put the logo there on the screen. Yeah. C4 is consecrated creators communicating Christ. So that's where the, 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 the four C's comes from. I love that. Say that one more time. Those are consecrated words. creators communicating Christ. Wow. We, we interact with so that. many youth and young adults. And some of them have gone out into media ministry as a one-man shop or one-woman shop. Mm -hmm. And several things have happened. Um, they've struggled with their faith. I, I don't want to put them down, but several have come back to us and they've just really uh, almost lost their way at times. And others have really struggled with the business in, how to interact with their clients, ministry clients, but how to interact with them well. And, yep. and just carrying, as we know, from the big picture, it's, it's a challenge to, you've got networking and you've got little details that have to be taken care of. And when you're a one person shop, boy, that, that's a lot of weight on you. Absolutely, that's a lot of responsibility and that's a lot on a young person's shoulders, like you said. So how does this, or how would this fit into the big picture of a media missionary? So because we've been out in the field yeah. doing media stories as media missionaries, mm -hmm. uh, traveling to 85 countries, as Jordan that's mentioned. That's incredible. Um, we have, we have uh, people who support our ministry and we call them media missionaries too. They're a part of the, just, just like your support is part of the ministry. And so we want to build this culture with C4 to continue as media missionaries, young adults being media missionaries. Using that term, by the way, media missionary might 
cause people, what does that really mean? Exactly. We've heard of medical missionaries, mm -hmm. but what does it mean to be a media missionary? So we've, we've got a video clip, okay. if we can yeah. show it. All right, yeah, let's go to that uh, role right now. Being a media missionary can mean many different things. It means the love of a home at the heart of the planet, the intrepid spirit of a village, and the vibe of a great metropolis. It means camera one and camera two. It means transforming a school, orphanage, or hospital. It means fire, rain, ice, and snow. It means gifts by the dollar and by the check. It means donations that roll and donations that fly. It's a movement on a trail or down a motorway. It means family. All of us together. And individually. It's who you are or who you are becoming. And to her, it's a simple gesture that means hope. Whatever it means to you, being a media missionary means more than you might think. Amen. Wow, it's fantastic and exciting. So we've been talking about uh, C4. So tell me more about C4, Jordan, because I know you're going to be overseeing this project under the uh, parent of Network 7. So tell us more about C4. Okay. About a year ago, we started a, uh, we did a, a small weekend with a group of uh, high school students down in Florida and focused on giving them the tools to tell their story, tell what God's done for them, tell how God's working in their lives in a uh, creative way and in a way that is, brings glory to God. And so we spent a weekend with them and went through uh, how to use the camera, how to do uh, framing shots and how to th set things up like that. And um, from there, we gave them the tools to start their own YouTube channel to be able to tell, uh, tell those things. Um, and they were really excited that they weekend were, to, they to were. do that. We spent two days with them and they were just gung-ho. So how did you find these young people? <clears throat> They were through a uh, uh, ASI ministry that we had worked with okay. in the past. Um, their pastor reached out to us and said, the, we have uh, students that are interested in this. And uh, we, had, we had kind of been talking to a couple of different groups about our idea. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he heard about it and said, why don't you come down and, and uh, go through it a little bit with our students. And, and that's where it, the, the base of it started. So it was so. kind of, a, I want to say, an experiment, because that may sound kind of bad, but just a trial, just to see how the young people reacted, kind of, yeah, just figure out if there's that much interest in the training for media missionaries. I mean, this is really fantastic. I mean, I, when I first heard about it, it was just a few months ago when you came up and we did the virtual ASI, and uh, you were sharing the vision of C4, we're like, oh, yes, because, you know, 3ABN can partner with this too, because I mean, when you're training young people, you know, we can work together, 3ABN, C4, because 3ABN is always looking for content for one. We're looking for good content, you know, as far as the content that's there, but then the professional quality that's gonna be produced. This is not new to you guys as far as media. I mean, you have a pastor background, but uh, you have uh, gone into all this media, missionary work, done the sunlight, mission sunlight. I mean, it's incredible. We have a lot of experience. You took it, you have your degree from Southern. That's correct. And then you've been working now for 16 years. That right for Mission Sunlight. So you have a lot of experience and a lot of things to offer the young people. When we got involved with ASI, even we started working with uh, youth and young adults of our church because mm -hmm. uh, Heritage Academy. Oh yeah. One of our ASI members, we started working with their production program, and they their kids were coming and helping us with live events like this. Oh yeah. Uh, from the ASI standpoint, so this C4 weekend was somewhat of a test to see how how it went. But we've had that opportunity to interact with youth and young adults for many years, and it just clearly the Lord is is leading and opening opening doors for this. Um, I was going to share uh, about the um, uh, curriculum. Okay. Uh, if some students are interested in what we're going to be sharing, obviously our main focus will be videography and photography and editing. Those are the the main interests. But we also want to include. Uh, some other media. I won't mention them all here, but we'll have some classes with uh, graphic design, um, with uh, social media, website. Um, wow. Uh, anything else you want to mention there? Uh, lighting? Some, some print design. Oh, print design as um, well? Studio lighting. Studio lighting, okay. Producing. A little bit of set design. Uh, so post production as po well? Obviously, post production. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. You got to have something to output, so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've been visiting our schools, and some of them have even mentioned. Uh, would we consider doing animation? If the Lord opens the door, that's an expensive mm. direction to go, but if the Lord opens the door, we certainly would consider uh, animation. 
But then there's, some, there's two or three other things that you might not think of in a media school like this. Uh, we're following, as best we can, you have to adapt, the Madison blueprint that Ellen White herself had a hand in writing. Amen. And that blueprint calls for practical work. So we're going to include practical work. Uh, there on the property, the campus, we have some horses. We also have gardening opportunities and some construction opportunities. We're going to need to build some things and uh, restructure some things there on the campus. We will also uh, include um, some business classes. Oh, wow. uh, one of our board members, Don Van Ornum, is a retired business professor. So he's going to help make sure we get the right people in, and, and he'll be involved in that, teaching some of that with uh, uh, business because students, again, get out there with that weight on their shoulders. We want to help them with just some basic accounting, some basic small business uh, best practices. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned, the practical work, the health. We want them to understand what the right arm of the gospel is. Some of our students will be coming from our supporting schools, and so they'll understand. But other students may be coming from secular, like the C4 weekend. Those were all public school students. Wow, that's incredible. And to understand, really have a grip on the right arm of the gospel, because our, our focus at the end of the program will be to help integrate them into ministries, ASI, OCI, other uh, Seventh-day Adventist institutions. Maybe 3 ABN. Maybe 3 ABN. Yeah, absolutely. And so for them to understand the health message, if they're struggling, not only to understand the health message as they may be editing it and, and putting it in the right context and not make a mistake with the video side, but also in their own personal life if they're struggling. Uh, it might be depression. It might just be some health issue. To understand how the right arm of the gospel affects that work, it'll be a blessing for them as an individual as well. So we're trying to include uh, a well-rounded program that really equips a young adult to go out there, maybe two of them go out and they work with the ministry, maybe they go out solo, maybe they work with several ministries. Um, some ministries can't afford somebody full time and so they might have to work for two or three to have a, a sustainable income. Again, just want to give them the tools on how they can be uh, a media missionary. You know, I love the, uh, the curriculum because a lot of times when you think of media in this day and age, it seems like we're all so stuck behind either a computer or cell phones or tablets all day long, but the young people are gonna have the opportunity to get outside too and breathe some fresh air and to do some practical work outside along with learning all the videography, photography aspect too, it's fantastic. And, and a side story of what you just said, holding up your device, they're going to be creating um, video and content for those devices. I mean, that is where, whether we like it or not, that is where the world is at. Sure is. Even across the board in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, people are getting their content, as you mentioned earlier, oh, people yeah. watching 3AVN right yep. now on oh, their yeah. devices. Mm -hmm. So we need to be answering that call. We can't afford to, to wait to do this better or that better or whatever. We need to get into it. And that's really where we felt the call to mm. uh, connect with our youth and young adults with, through that. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, and I, when I think about what God has laid upon your heart, it's fantastic because it is the way the world is going. And there's so much content that's being put out there, but it's for the devil. May I just say that? And there's so much opportunity that we have as Christians, Seventh-day Adventist Christians, to put the gospel out there and to share the love of Jesus to others. It's fantastic. So there's someone at home right now. There's a young person, young adult that says, hey, I'm in. Now what happens next? Because do they need to come with a whole bunch of gear? They may say, man, I don't have anything. All I've got is just me. They need to come with their own equipment to come. You said it starts in August of 2021, and you said only 12 students. So someone right now is saying, please tell me I'm ready to sign up right now because that's limited. I mean, this program is going to the entire world, so 12 is not many. So what do they need to do to start? Well, first they can reach out to us on our website or okay. on social media. And what is that? Um, for uh, our social media, it's a C4 Mission Mm -hmm. and that's on Instagram and Facebook. Perfect. So they can find us on both those places. And then and they uh, can find applications and information more. That's correct. Okay, so there's an application, so they would fill out an application. Yeah. All right. And if they have their own equipment, we're happy for them to bring it so that they can use the equipment that, they, that they're that they used to, that they know. Mm -hmm. But we also have cameras on site. We have computers on site for editing. And, um, Do you really? So we'll have the equipment there for them to be able to use. Wow, because only 12 students, I mean, that's not many. And you're keeping it small for a reason, I'm sure. Trying to follow a biblical model of 12. <laughs> okay. Right. And, oh, and the Madison, that's neat. Okay. And the Madison Blueprint was to send out ministries yeah. that were small, that were, were training. So how long is the training? Because, okay, so someone may say, okay, are you talking like a four-year, uh, like I have to dedicate four years of my life to the curriculum? We're doing a nine-month program. Nine so we'll start months. in August and end in May. Okay. And with 12 students, that gives a lot of time for one-on-one -on -one time with the instructors, um, with our, our, our staff that will uh, be in media and give them a lot of in-depth uh, training in it. So will there be like place for them to board 
this, or is they have to find their own housing? It's a uh, lived in campus. Fantastic. So we have a couple of buildings. We'll have guys and girls of course. Uh, separated, mm -hmm. of course. We get asked that a lot, so okay, I, I no, felt like thanks mentioning for, that. Yeah, it's okay. That's good. Um, so yeah, and food. Someone's cooking, or the students are cooking, or we we have not hired the cook, but we've interviewed a couple and uh, really okay. impressed with the possibilities. Um, some of the places where those two are working are already worried that we're going to take their very best <laughs> cook, but we're yes. excited about it. So. Amen. <laughs> God, God, God will fill the need wherever, Amen. wherever it's necessary. Mm, yeah, fantastic. So then I'm thinking about equipment. Maybe I'm jumping ahead too far here, but with the equipment, I mean, this is incredible because I know here at 3ABN having studios and control rooms, that's, um, it takes quite a bit of money. So you said there's actually, you already have some computers. You do have some equipment that God's provided already for C4? We do. I mean, we've been a production house for mm -hmm. 16 years now, so we have uh, our own equipment that we've been using, but we've had some generous donors who have approached us without us even talking to them about the project so far. And they've said, we, we've we been impressed that you need this and and you need to, to be able to outfit equipment for these students. And so God is already leading before we can even ask. It's been incredible. Wow. That was That's fantastic. Jordan mentioning those donors was incredibly affirming because, you know, Satan is pesky. He is. And he plants doubts. And so when you have one donor do this out of the blue and then you have another one out of the blue, somebody you haven't even talked to about, um, that's just so affirming that they say, hey, I hear this is happening. I want to I want to be a part or use this wherever God is uh, is leading right now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible, you know, because that is confirming to know, hey, God, you've got this because, you know, it's a dream that God's given you, you know, to uh, build C4 and to train the young people. Go ahead. You're going to say something else. That's awesome. I just want to mention, we talked about curriculum, but mm -hmm. I, I forgot to mention, there are going to be uh, about three trips a year, and I say about because there might be four, um, where we're going to be taking the students out with us to different locations, internationally and domestically. Are you shooting more Mission Sunlights? That's right. One of those trips wow, will be taking them on a Mission cool. Sunlight trip. So, for instance... Uh, we don't have a picture, I'm sorry, but recently we were in Kenya. So we went to, to Nairobi and Kasumu, and then we also traveled to uh, Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. And so we would uh, be able to break up the group into teams and different leaders, like Jordan might go one direction, our executive director may go another direction, mm -hmm. and I may go another direction, and we'll take the students to get uh, what it is in the heart of the, the mission field, uh, opportunities to be media missionaries and produce those stories that will be shown literally around the world with Mission Sunlight. Wow. And then I mentioned World Youth Group. Uh, world Youth Group has a fantastic program of evangelism for youth. Um, they're taking many of our academies from all over the world to Cuba and doing public evangelism in places where there is no Adventist presence. Wow. And so we're wanting to partner with them and we'll take youth and young adults down to do public evangelism. Again, another training tool where they understand uh, the the that aspect of, of the church work. So, okay. And then they'll produce mm. media stories while they're there, grabbing those, those stories of people who are baptized, who are, whose lives are transformed, either those in the campaign or from previous campaigns. So again, storytelling, and these may end up coming back to 3ABN. 3ABN, I, I'm sorry, you were gonna say something. Well, I mean, that's just amazing. So actually the young people are gonna be there recording the event, is that right? But also they're involved with the standing up on the stage, so to speak, and actually presenting the Word of God. That's right. Wow. And again, that ASI networking Beautiful. connection, we're all a ministry family. Amen. So then what's the, then the goal then? So once someone's been through this for nine months and the young person's been, they've trained, they've been out in the field, they've got a lot of knowledge, then what's your dream? What happens next for that person, that young adult? Well, we want to be a place where organizations can come to us and say, we're looking for somebody to fill this role. We want to build a network where we can say this person will fill this role for you. And as Christopher said, some organizations can't afford to have one person full time. And so if we had a couple of people come to us, we could say this person can come in here and, and fill this role and work with a couple of different organizations to, to meet okay. that need. Okay. And ministries have already been coming and saying, could you train somebody to just work part time for us or a third of the time with us? And so there is a need that, again, that was another tangible affirmation of, can you bring in some youth and young adults to help us? We, we can't afford you full time or whatever, but mm -hmm. could we bring in a, a youth or young adult? Wow. So in other words, let's uh, use 3ABN as an example then. So like, like if we need a project done, you'd be willing to do that project. Or also like if we need someone like 
part-time to help us out with those special projects. Is that what you're referring to? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, that's absolutely amazing then that uh, you think about the content, because again, there's so much content that's out there, but sometimes it's just hard to actually get it recorded and then out on like the devices and things like that. So C4, what an incredible vision. So tell us more, what else uh, you've got about C4. Well, Greg, we've been talking about youth and young adults. We've ta been talking about um, media missionaries that's and right. training those youth and young adults. So in our experience, and I'm sure in, in yours as well as you folks travel around the country, mm -hmm. youth and young adults have a yearning to be making a difference. They have a, a yearning true. for positive media because there's plenty of negative out there for them to, to consume. Their friends are consuming it. They're, they're, they're sharing with one another, hey, look at you know this. Yeah. So many temptations. And we're just seeing that youth and young adults have a heart for ministry. They may not completely know how to get there. They may not know completely how to use their skills. And again, we talked about some that get discouraged when they do try to use their skills. So this is really, really about, um, uh, to paraphrase, uh, creating an army of youth Amen. to be media missionaries Amen. who will take the three angels' messages through media <laughs> around the world. Wow. I love it. You know, I think about, I'm sure you've seen, I mean, you've been to, you travel around a number of different academies as well and I'm um, sure universities and colleges too. And you see young people that are involved. I think about our own local church here at the Thompsonville Church. We stream our services every Sabbath. You know, our Thompsonville Seventh-day Adventist Church does. We have young people that are there, you know, learning to run the, the, the cameras that the church has purchased and things like that. But uh, you always see some of those young people say, hey, I want more. I want to learn more. I want to do this, but I don't know how to do this. I can't afford this type of stuff. Well, that's what C4 is all about. That's right. And like you said, there's always, there's always somebody hanging around when you're doing production. There's always <laughs> somebody looking true. over your shoulder. Yep. They, want to know, they want to know what you're doing and how you do it. And so we want to give an outlet for that and, and train them so that they can go on and do it in a, in a powerful way for the Lord. So. I'm thinking about, too, a young person could come and take the course and then actually go back to their church. That's right and make a massive difference. Like the church just go to another level with social media, design, production quality, mm. all of that. And we talk to our older church members, our, well, I like to call them more mature members, okay. uh, all the time who have a real heart for not just their children, but their grandchildren. Amen. They wanna make sure that their grandchildren find a connection. That's, that's how we keep youth and young adults in the church, being connected. That's how all of us stay in the church, mm. is because of a connection. Uh, hopefully it's a deep connection with Christ, but little things build that. And through media, a uh, youth or young adult can stay connected. Not only do they find their place where they can be in ministry, but they stay connected to Amen. supporting their local church or going out and supporting uh, a mission field or a ministry uh, somewhere out there. And so if there's a, uh, a more mature member watching, we'd encourage them to, to share with their children or grandchildren this mm -hmm. uh, ministry because C4 could be life-changing, not just for the people that the media eventually reaches, but for that one individual young adult. Amen. Oh, yeah. And I think it's really, really neat because there's so much interest in media. I've seen what some people have even shot with their phones. I mean, it's phenomenal, actually, the talent that is out there. But then to be able to take it to the level like, you know, the lighting aspect, you know, a lot of people may not uh, consider even the lighting that it takes to do a, a set like this, or when you're out in the field, how do you do lighting in the field? You know, okay, so I'm out, okay, you're looking for you know, the, the way the light, the shadows, and all that kind of stuff, and all of that's being, you guys are training them, right? To do all right. of this, yeah, it's amazing. It's all, all of the little pieces of media that we can incorporate, we will incorporate into that nine months. So in, in a few minutes, we're gonna actually put up on the screen what we call our address roll, which gives you the opportunity to get more information. But again, that's just in a few minutes, so get your pen and paper ready, or your phone so you can take notes. Uh, on how to contact them. But tell us again, just again, pitch this August of 2021. Again, what is happening in August 21? Because this is huge and there's only 12 slots available, open spots available. So let's tell everyone again what's happening again in August of this year. We're starting, uh, we're opening our doors for C4. And, uh, you know, you talked about how students are always looking for something more. The way technology has advanced, it's so much more attainable now it is. than it has ever been. And so, we're opening our doors to train them how to use it so that they can use that to finish the, to bring the gospel to the rest of the world, Amen. to finish the work. Amen. Only 12 students, too. 12 students. Okay. C4 is consecrated creators communicating Christ. Love it. And there are many ways to communicate Christ. 
we, we don't want to miss the consecrated part. We want to, to help grow their spiritual lives, but communicating Christ. We talked about the Jack Blanco story. Yes. It aired here on 3ABN several times, maybe again in the future. Mm -hmm, that's right. And we want to take that project, uh, the Blanco project, we call it, to a film platform. Okay. And so in order to do that, C4 students could be involved in producing a film even. Wow. Um, I do want to, if we can, yeah. show just a, 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 one of the promos that was produced for the Jack Blanco story, if people aren't familiar with it, and when it comes to 3ABN, they'll, they'll maybe be interested in watching it. Okay, yeah, so let's go to that uh, little promo video right now. Amen. Well done. That's a great little promo. And uh, Elder Jack Blanco, what an incredible man. The Lord's used him in a mighty way. And his clear word uh, devotional oh. paraphrase has yep. literally reached millions. Sure has. And have been transformational. His life story, we had, when we were, when we were producing the documentary, we had three young adults with us. Um, three or four, actually, because we went to multiple locations internationally. They were so moved by watching his experience. Mm. Um, and so when we talk about carrying this experience to uh, young adults at C4, that, that kind of uh, heart appeal to transforming them, to see how media can transform and change people's lives, mm -hmm. that's what we want to give them. Yep. Um, if people are wondering what we mean by that, we're not just talking about emotion, we're just really talking about transformation. And we're going to show a clip here of Jack going to what was a labor camp when he was a teenager, going to this labor camp and recognizing the exact place where he was, the best way to describe it was translated. Wow. He was physically in one place about to enter a gate with a bunch of other prisoners mm. and all of a sudden just boom, he was out in the woods far, I mean he could still see the camp but he was far away and he was safe. Wow. And that experience, the video is the moment that he realized that he was at that place where he had been walking from, the, the train track was right by the building, and just watching him. And that's the kind of uh, experience that we want to bring to youth and young adults. So you were there with your team is what you were saying? We were, and a number of youth and young adults on, of course, they're behind cameras, yep. but uh, they're, they're experiencing that. By the way, people are going to go, where is that in his book? So Jack was careful in the book because he knew it would have a broad viewership, sure. and he, he just used the wording that um, he was able to to slip through the gate and get away. He, he didn't want people to get caught on the supernatural, mm -hmm. but when we got to the documentary, um, he was more comfortable with the culture that we live in and people would understand what it meant for that to happen in the blink of an eye. So what we're, what we're getting ready to see right now then is when he realized this is the spot yeah, where God performed this powerful miracle in his life. There were so many miracles as mm -hmm. we were producing yeah. this story and this is just one of them. We didn't even know when we left for Germany where this location was. We, were, we had an idea and we were driving around and it turns out it's a, now a science research center in Leipzig. Mm -hmm. And so where the scene opens up, we're walking on the sidewalk outside the research center and one of the miracles just, mm -hmm. the Lord opened the gate. Wow. A student happened to be going through it, opened the gate and allowed us to enter. There's a little Memorial Holocaust Museum there, um, but it wasn't open that day. But uh, that student allowed us, chit-chatted with us, allowed us to go in. Uh, probably we couldn't have gotten past the big security guards, but that little side gate, we were able to get in. And then just watch Jack as that moment hits mm. him, as he realizes, if he had entered that labor camp, 
that would have been the end. Yeah, wow. God had more for him. Amen. And that's a message we want to teach to our youth and young adults. God has more for you. Amen. So, yeah, let's go to that uh, powerful role right now. In 2012, Jack and the documentary team found the place where he was supernaturally transported away from the labor camp. It now serves as a governmental scientific research center in Leipzig, Germany. It was an emotional moment for Jack as he remembered his near-death experience at the hands of one of the Third Reich's most lethal labor and concentration camps. Jack's experience is like the biblical story of Philip found in Acts 8 when God took Philip bodily from the road by Jerusalem and placed him in another city. You must have gotten close to this before you found yourself yeah. outside of this wall. Well, that's the point, yeah. Wow. I'm, get, I'm getting the chills. But this would have been the main entrance. You, you had to have been close to here. I'm going to kneel down here and have a little prayer. Okay. Jack was free. During the next two days, he made his way back to his grandparents' farm. Wow, it's an incredibly powerful story. It really is. You know, uh, I saw you there, of course, on camera. Uh, Christopher, but what about you, Jordan? Because you were on camera. We didn't see you in this. So I what's was. it like for you? I because was. you were there recording this. What does well, that do for you? You know, you have to keep running. You have to keep rolling. Um, it's, it's sometimes hard, but it was emotional for all of us to, to be there. As, as Dr. Blanco said, you, he had chills and we all felt them. Um, it, was, it was just a, a powerful experience to be there for it. I mean, you've seen a, a lot of incredible miracle stories. We I mean, have. This being one here, so you, have. you have one you want to share? Uh, yeah. One of your experiences being out there in the field? Yeah. So when we travel for Mission Sunlight, uh, we try to get a mixture of uh, the project sites as well as everyday life. So we want to show our viewers what it's like in the, the, the villages, the cities that we're going to. And one time we were in uh, Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. And we were taken to this little market to get some market scenes. Um, the colors are always bright there. People are usually happy and milling about. And yeah, so and tell them who took us. The, the, church, uh, the church leaders there okay. in, in the division took us to, to visit this market. Sure. And, um, and we always get permission before we go, mm -hmm. or we try to, to make sure that it's okay. And so you're visiting this to record some of the, like, the beautiful, like, of that culture. Yeah, the, the, the sure. people in the market, the, yeah. the vegetables, they're, okay. they're bright in color and yeah. just the interactions of the, of the village, you mm -hmm. know. One of, the, one of the tools we found is if you go to a public market like that that's open, you can get lots of people shots oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's a concentrated area so you don't have to be traveling all over the city to try and get, sure. if you can find a, a busy part of the city or a market like that. Mm -hmm. Just a little trick. You're there, just doing your minding your business, right? right. Getting good videography. Right. And and as we're shooting uh, different shots, you know, we, we get close ups, we get wide shots. Mm -hmm. We we kind of got a sense that people were getting a little agitated with us. Oh. And that's never a good sign, no, especially in a country you don't speak the language. Uh oh. And uh, so we weren't sure really what was going on, but we had a sense that we probably should start moving on. Um, we've we've done this for long enough that you kind of get the idea that it's it's time to leave. Um, so we started heading back to where we had parked, and uh, next thing we knew, we were yelling. Um, mm. And we turned around, and there were a couple guys running towards us. Okay. And we with like friendly smiles and saying, "Hey." They they were not friendly smiles. They oh. they were quite upset, and uh, they at least two of them, maybe all three of them, had machetes in their hands. And machetes. The machetes. Yeah. They, okay, so this is not a friendly greeting. They were not happy to see us. They, they were quite upset. And uh, so we started moving faster towards our vehicle. I would um, be too. <laughs> because we, we just wanted to get out of there. And, and uh, we realized that we were not going to make it to our vehicle before they caught up to us. And so we, we kind of stopped and tried to, to be nice and, and tried to converse with them. But obviously, they didn't speak English. And so it was just the two of us at this point. And uh, they took us through the market, and we had no idea what was going on. And there was nobody around that we recognized from uh, our interactions previously. And uh, they took us into this small office. And as we got in there, there was a rare, very big desk, probably, probably about the size of this desk, maybe a little bit bigger. And I'll tell you, when you're sitting on 
the other side of this desk, it makes you feel really small. Mm. Um, mm. Not being able to communicate with the people in the room. So uh, you're in trouble. We, we, we didn't know how much trouble we were in. <laughs> yeah. um, but there was a lady sitting on the other side of it and she had a panel of, uh, I would call it a panel of, of other women in the, in the room with her. And we're trying to communicate what we're doing, what we're, why we're there. Um, and as, we, as we're in there, uh, this younger woman walks in and she starts talking to the lady behind the desk. It turns out that she was the daughter of the, of the woman. And she said she had been to our Adventist University in Maryland, uh, Washington Adventist University. Oh, wow. And she said, if these people are working with the church, they're okay. As in the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And so they let us go. And as you can see on the screen here, uh, we got a picture with, oh. the, with the gentleman that chased us down. No machetes. They, I they, see no machetes. They were yeah. a lot happier at this point, but it turns out that this was a market for battered women and oh, it was okay. to give them income. Yep. And so they were trying to protect those women. They didn't know why we were there. They didn't know what sure. our goal was and they just wanted to protect them and keep them safe. So they were technically doing their job. They just weren't sure exactly what you were doing. But what a miracle. It and was. we should it say was. the church yeah. leaders did eventually come in and, and talk with her too. And, sure. and so it was a good witness opportunity that wouldn't have happened. It just was a little interesting the way it started. Oh yeah. Not all of our stories are that exciting, <laughs> yeah. but uh, some of them are, are quite exciting at times. So, You know, it's incredible. You know, you think about the miracles, you know, of how um, Network 7 started. And then I'm thinking about the vision for C4 and what God is doing. I mean, I'm just so excited about this because God is raising up uh, an army of young people, as uh, Christopher mentioned earlier. And, uh, and C4 is going to be part of that, too, training young people in, in media. And it's such a needed um, field for young people to be trained in because, again, we're connected, it seems like, to our phones and all these devices, but to put content out there, but to be able to present it in the way that Christ would want us to do, that is what C4 is all about. What we're getting ready to go to now is the address roll that will give you the opportunity of how you can put an application in for the C4 classes, right? Mm -hmm. That'll be on the uh, address roll. And then also, too, they're looking for support as well for equipment and other things that they need to get this school up and going. So here's the address roll and the more information that you can get for C4. For more information about Network 7 Media Center, please contact them at P.O. Box 25468, Chattanooga, Tennessee 37422. That's P.O. Box 25468, Chattanooga, Tennessee 37422. Their phone number is 423-855-4877. That's 423-855-4877. Their web address is n7mc.org. That's n7mc.org. And you can reach them via email at admin at n7mc.org. Wow, this one hour has flown by in a hurry. And of course, if you weren't able to get all the contact information down, you can always call 3ABN and we'd be happy to give you Network 7's contact information or C4. I'm so excited about the classes that'll be starting in August of this year. And again, I would sign up if I could. Ages, just tell me real quick, Jordan, what's the age and then give us a closing thought. Age range that you're looking for? Yeah, we're looking for 18 to 25. Okay. Uh, it's a post-high post school program. Any closing thoughts here? If you're I just wanna encourage students that if they are interested in this to be prayerful about it. Mm. Um, we have a powerful calling to, to bring the gospel through us, the rest of the world. And we all have people of influence in our life and um, who have impacted us and we have the opportunity to impact other people. Amen. So uh, just, Thank you. just be prayerful about it as you, as you consider it. And you can find an application, students can find an application on our social media, C4 Mission on Facebook and Instagram. Perfect. Thank you. Christopher, any closing thoughts? I would just uh, mention that we also have some staff openings still, and on All those right. same social media sites, uh, they can find the uh, ministry descriptions. Mm -hmm. So if there's someone out there who's interested in being a part of this team who has skills in these areas, we would love to have them consider joining us as mm -hmm. well. I do want to just share this thought from Deuteronomy chapter okay. 4. Take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Deuteronomy 4.9. Mm. We see and hear a lot of things. As media missionaries, we can share those. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Jordan, for being with us today. And thank you for joining us at home. I want to encourage you, if you know a young person or you are a young person and are, have interest in C4, I encourage you to contact them. Thank you for being a part of the ministry of 3ABN. Thank you for your prayers and support. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.